<laughs> How do you feel about the media's treatment of Elon over the past year? I mean, we just had a Wall Street Journal article come out that said he does ketamine and drugs. He <laughs> had uh, Dan Ives, who's obviously a very big supporter, but he basically called him a child in the earnings call. And I'm not saying Dan Ives is like mainstream media or anything. I'm just saying there's a lot of noise out there. Um, and, and broadly speaking, Business Insider has had hit piece after hit piece over the past couple of months mm. just saying this guy doesn't really care. He's obsessed with uh, free speech on Twitter, even though he's saying potentially anti-Semitic things. Uh, he is, you know, obsessed with illegal immigration in the United States when he should be obsessed with, you know, building a billion dollar company and having a fiduciary duty to shareholders. And he's high all the time. I mean, what is your uh -huh. response to a lot of the mainstream media criticism of the richest man of our, of our lifetime? So do you agree with me that all this fuck came right after he bought X? Oh, 100%. 100%. There yeah. we go. That's the answer. That's the answer. Before all this, there was fud, but not to the level of it is now. Like at this point, they are attacking Elon Musk. They're, they're just like straight up. Anything that he does, he farts. Oh, he's bad. He's, you know, bad for the environment. He's not. He's, he's not an environment. You know what I mean? Like anything this man does, the the, 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 the freaking media will go on it. And why? It'll, it'll, why? It'll why do you? Why do you think so? Because it's clicks. It's clicks. And I think they're trying. To, I think they see X as a threat. And um, I would, if I was in their shoes, I would see it as a threat. I mean, the fact that you're paying, you're, you're paying content creators for free speech, mm. you know, there's not, you know, you're trying to avoid this corrupt thing that's happening and behind, you know, who knows what's happening behind, you know, behind closed doors and behind curtains and you got X coming and Twitter was behind the biggest curtain for the Democrats. You know what I mean? So, and you don't see, I don't see much right wing attacking Elon Musk compared to the left wing. Mm -hmm. you know anti-semitism all that kind of stuff like it's crazy with the amount and 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 it generates a lot of clicks more clicks more money so so you think on twitter he basically unleashed the floodgates in 2022 when he made a proclamation that twitter is going to be a real town square people thought it would go under i actually made a thousand dollar bet with my friend that it would be bankrupt soon i said it wouldn't he said it would and i think we have a five-year bet and i think i'm going to win that thousand bucks but now twitter's paying people i mean you got paid i think like 150 bucks or something the other week and so you're not only getting paid to tweet your ideas, you're not really getting censored to the extent that you were for the past decade on Twitter. And your argument is legacy media that thrives off clicks and uh, advertising revenue and traffic back to their media entities. They see Twitter as a crowdsourcing platform of you, Curious Peggy, and Amit's thoughts. And because Amit and Curious Peggy don't have to get a job at Business Insider, Business Insider is screwed, which is why they have to defame Elon and hopefully wish for Twitter's downfall. And that's why this is all happening. Yeah, I think I, th that also has an element to it too. But I think it's just, um, um, I mean, I, I hope I hope this is not the statement is not true. But I think it was because maybe free speech was being suppressed in a way. Maybe maybe that could be the reason why um, they're going after him because what Elon has done, as you said, he's unleashed it. He's made it free and and for anyone to come and speak their mind, whatever they want. And when it was Twitter previously, this was, I mean, I, I never had Twitter because of, I think for this reason, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but yeah, what he has done, he has, um, imagine the world's richest man who, who is trying to change the whole auto industry, which has, but it is trying to change the whole auto industry into EVs. And you've got the competitors, legacy automakers that can't make a profitable EV. And now they're coming up with FUD saying that. People don't want EVs. I mean, people just want a gas car. I mean, that, <laughs> and those guys paid, used to pay Twitter to advertise all these things. Now they're not really doing as much. Correct. I do see the irony when it comes to advertisement where it shows they're bashing an EV vehicle, which is mainly a Tesla. And then right after that, it's like a gas, it's like a gas, a gas diesel truck or a gas diesel car right after, right? Like literally right after. I'm just like, this is eat. Easily what's going on here. Easily what, what, what's going on What here. did you think of Elon saying, go f yourself to Bob Iger? I think he was right. I mean, I mean, well, the thing was happening, what's happening with, uh, man, it's sad to see it. It's happening with, uh, what's it called? Um, Disney. Disney. Yeah. Man. <laughs> it's not, it's, it's, I don't want to, I, 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 I don't want to say anything that's very sensitive here, but. It's not what it was like 10, 15 years ago. You know what I mean? It's not, it's, 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 it's clear that there's something, 
behind the curtains behind that. I'll just say it like that. <laughs> There's something behind there. <laughs> uh, you know, I think it's very interesting because I, I have become such a fan of the platform. And I, it's it's one of the most interesting platforms in the world to me just because of the idea that you could tweet a couple things, say a couple things, just words, and it can appear in front of you know thousands of people. And I think one of the hindrances to Twitter's growth, I mean, you look at it for the past 10 years, valued at, I mean, the stock was basically flat. It went up for a little bit during the COVID bubble, then it came back down. And Jack Dorsey did not institute video posting. They did not have an edit button. They didn't have, you know, like they, they the most basic things Elon has done in the past like six months. And yeah. for 10 years, that company didn't do it. So it begs the question, well, what was the company working for? And it seems like the company was not working for shareholders. They were working for their own ideological tendencies. And I think Elon ripping that is what really gets Twitter is the town square. I mean, it has the least amount of users when it comes to social media, but the most important people are on the platform, like politicians, you know, yeah. you know, billionaires, whatever, right? These are the people that are engaging with the platform. They're not on TikTok and Instagram all day. And yeah. so when you have the most important people that finally have a voice and that can say whatever the hell they want, I would imagine Elon's picking a very big battle against the deep state or, you know, the, yeah. whatever you want to call it that's controlling the media enterprises of the world. And that's a, that's a tough battle. You're going to get a lot of shit if you do that. Yeah, and um, we're seeing leaks coming out and articles coming out that um, after when Elon did uh, purchase Twitter, um, the, the Biden administration really took more of a heavier stance on 